Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Carol Ashburn. I'm the Director of Marketing for Excellos, and I'd like to welcome you to Webinar Wednesday. Today we'll be going through the new features we've added to our version 6 edition of your Dispatch Series software and taking a closer look. And here to present that to you is Kevin Pasternak, our National Sales Manager. Hey everybody, um, I'd like to welcome you as well to our webinar today. I'm going to leave the line open so that if anybody does have any questions as we go through, you can certainly ask them. There will be a Q&A session at the end. If, you, if you'd like to wait till then. I ask that, that if there's any background noise in your office, um, if you have a mute button on your phone, if you put that on, uh, please don't put us on hold during the webinar. We've had some people do that in the past, and we all get to listen to some nice on hold music. If that happens, I'll probably have to go ahead and mute you all. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'd like to go through a little bit of a corporate overview uh, for those of you that are new customers or those who have been customers for a while. And have, have just not familiar with with Prophecy and our and our uh, company. Prophecy as a, as a company has been in business for 20 years. Uh, our corporate offices, where I'm located today, and all of our development, uh, most of our development is done. All of our support is done is right here in in Bloomfield, Connecticut. Uh, we have 15,000 active customers, uh, made up of for hire carriers, private fleets, uh, 3PLs, manufacturers, distributors, all of our applications from our log routing software, driver, driver tracks, driver management software, fuel tax software, mileage and routing software. And we've got 1,200 customers that are using our complete dispatch software um, like everybody that's on the line today. A year ago, Prophecy was actually acquired by Excellus Corporation. So we are now a wholly owned subsidiary of Excellus. Um, Ex is a, a, a supply management software company. Uh, headquartered out of Colorado Springs, Colorado. We have divisions in, in, in uh, Toronto, in the greater Toronto area, uh, Plymouth, Michigan, here in Bloomfield, uh, as we uh, have already talked about. Except has about 2,500 enterprise customers um, running uh, various uh, applications. Um, one of the companies that they acquired before us was FreightLogix. FreightLogix is another TS software, uh, but it specializes in the LTL market. Uh, Radio Beacon was another one. Radio Beacon is a, is a warehouse management software product. Man Data Solutions out of Plymouth, Michigan is a product that is a data collection product that is seamlessly integrated to the Microsoft Dynamics accounting solution. In fact, it's the only one that goes directly to the Dynamics back end. And Delphor was another acquisition of Excellus. All of these, have, by the way, have happened in the last three and a half years. Delphor is a 3PL system. Uh, 3PL being defined as a warehouse management system that's used in a 3PL operation, i.e. A, a public operation. Today, together, um, we've got customers in 17 countries across across the globe. We've got about 160 plus employees. And we are growing both uh, organically, and we will continue to grow through uh, through acquisition. Um, there may be another acquisition before the end of uh, of this calendar year. We're staying. Um, but we're also small enough to be personal to take care of you. And I, hopefully, the last year, none of you have noticed any way in which interacted with us here at Prophecy. We've got solid financial backing with with an excess of thirty million dollars um, bank today. Values of, of, of excellent commitment, uh, employees' integrity, humility, um, innovation, and citizenship. Those are all things that that, that the Founded of Excellus, the four individuals that founded Excellus strongly believe in um, and remind all of us every day. With all that in mind, um, let's go ahead and let's take a look at the reason we're all here today, and that's to take a look at version 6. Now, I know many of you on the line today have received version 6, and, and some of you uh, may not have received version 6. We can certainly, um, uh, at the end, we can. Uh, we can uh, if you haven't received version 6, we can go through that. You can shoot us an email. We can get it out to you. But as with any other uh, major update that we do, we do not just release it to, to all 1,200 customers at once. Um, we, we send it out in small batches. So the first thing I'd like to do today, in order to recognize the differences that are in version 6, I think it's important at least to go through software quickly and take a look at it, um, what's there now. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to go through, and I'm actually just going to going to book a regular load um, so that we can all kind of familiarize ourselves with, with, with just what's what's happening now. So I'm just going to book a load. 
Um, they're going from Chicago, um, coming here to Bloomfield. Uh, let's give it a start date of uh, the 16th. We'll give it a delivery date of the 17th. Let me go ahead and save it. Um, we'll, uh, we'll put uh, goods on here. We'll just make it um, staging. 4,000 pounds, and if anybody, once again, if anybody has any questions on what I'm doing throughout the presentation today, please go ahead and ask, rate it. All of this should be very familiar with you, and then we can put some reps numbers in here if we want to as well. Just We've just booked a load, load 6831. I'm just going to go ahead and assign that load, and you'll be familiar with, I believe, this, this assignment screen. Um, you know any yellow on here is showing us warnings. Um, any red that we see on here is showing us things that are past due. Um, and so just, we're going to take uh, driver Andrews, going to take a trailer and assign it to that to that load as well. So we've got driver tractor trailer on there. Going to hit the payments to calculate some pay for the driver. I'm going to just status to mark it on route. We're going to go ahead and change the status once again to go ahead and, and complete load. And everything that, that we've done here so far looks very much um, like you're doing things in your system today. Conference now. So keep in mind and what we just went through and what we saw, let's go through and look at just a couple of simple setup things in version 6 that, that you should be aware of. Um, first thing, trailer washout functionality. We have we have customers that do dry freight. We have customers that do flat freight. We have customers that do liquid bulk, um, dry bulk, all kinds of things. But certainly the people that are doing the bulk, whether it be liquid or dry, have asked us about trailer washout functionality throughout the years. That's something that has been added um, in version 6, both for setting up goods and commodities and then tracking when they're done, if they're required, et cetera. So the first thing you'd want to do is go to maintain goods. And go ahead and select the good, and let's just select uh, today. Let's just select latex. And you'll notice here in goods, there's a there's a, a new field here that says trailer washout required after hauling, and it's checked off. That means that if if latex is added to a load, and we will add that to a load in a few minutes, them should prompt us when we complete load for washout information. If that washout isn't done. And before that lo that loaded that trailer is assigned to a next load, it's going to alert somebody the washout was required. So that's just some basic setup that goes around washouts, and we'll we'll talk more and see more about washouts when we go through and actually put a load through the system. Any questions on this right now? I think that's really straightforward. Another major area that that was uh, added in, in version six is tracking expenses within dispatch. Well, again, over the years, we've had a number of requests from customers that they that wanted to track expenses. They wanted to look at a piece of equipment, tractor, for instance, and wanted to look at it for a specific time frame. They wanted to see what's all the revenue in that time frame, what expenses in that time frame, how much fuel, how much have I spent on maintenance, uh, what about my uh, my other expenses, tolls, what about things like track payments, registration, all those types of things. And we we took a really a really a long time before we added anything in dispatch for this, because our position had always been that those were accounting functions. And those of you that are my customers know that when I do the software with you and when we've talked over to using QuickBooks, one of the things I strongly recommend that you do is set up class tracking in QUickBooks and set up um, departmentalization, your class tracking by power unit, so that you can track those expenses and get your P&L over in QuickBooks. But once again, people were asking for this functionality within dispatch, so this is what we did. We added Kane. You're now going to find something that says expense types. And you can see my system that I do have a number of expense types up already. I've got a highway use tax set up. I've got tractor insurance. I've got tractor loan payment, tractor registration, trailer insurance, trailer registration. You'll notice for each of these expense types that I've set up, I've got a frequency set up as well. I get a one time, a weekly, beginning of the month. Month, middle of the month, end of the month. So that's when should this expense be applied, whether it's quarterly, end of the quarter, annually, annually. You can activate or deactivate an expense type at any time, and you can you can put it out for that expense type. Go ahead and 
add an expense type. So we'll just click add. We're here to, uh, we'll just call it um, tolls. A one-time expense type, I'll save it. I'm going to put a dollar amount in here because this would be an expense type that I would add on the fly. If I, if I was doing invoicing and I saw there was there was an expense that was incurred, or if I was doing my settlements and I saw there was an expense that was incurred for tolls, I could just add this expense and then it would be tracked throughout the system. Any questions on adding expense types? Oh, let's go out there and let's go to manage expense transactions. So we're going to go on operations. We're going to go to manage expense transactions. And what this screen is designed for is when you're setting up expenses and you want to associate a one expense with multiple pieces of equipment, instead of having to go into each tractor and add a specific expense, like your highway use tax, for example, in here what you can do is you can select the expense. We'll say highway use tax in this case um, we can see when it when it should begin so let's say let's say it's going to be in um, next year on January 1st and it's going to run through 12 31 to 2010 Oops. Go ahead and we've got tractors down here. We'll select all and then we'll click create. So we now see that, that all of those those tractors have been selected. If I scroll this down, and the expense would be applied to all of those as, as I said select all and then I clicked on create. Now I've already I've done this already in my system, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do this today, but that shows you how to do it. Any questions on this screen? Let me close that out. What to show you here? Let's go to maintain. Let's tractors. Let's go to row to CT. And you know there's a new box at the bottom of the screen. And I'm going to go ahead and just expand it for you here. And you can see for tractor O2 CT, I've got some expenses that are associated with that tractor. I've got a use tax of 550. That was I said apply that as of the first. Of, of 1109 tractor insurance for the year at seven thousand dollars, and of course, if you wanted to break that insurance up between your liability and your cargo, um, you you could break up um, your what what your tractor payments are uh, for that tractor, registration costs for that tractor on an annual basis. What I'm not seeing here, and what I don't have in the system right now, is any one-time expenses I may have put in, such as tolls. Um, anything else that, that I that I wanted to add in as an expense. Let's take a look at, at a trailer. Trailer 5302. And bottom we can see some expenses that have been set up and associated with this trailer. One's expenses will get applied automatically throughout the year and we begin to reporting and take a look at that um, in just a little while. So that's the setup, and, and that's what we've added as far as expense tracking is concerned. Other questions in the area of, of, of expense tracking? Uh, hello, this is Dragan with Gemini Transport. Yes. Uh, can I just add a quick question? Uh, what is this washout above above expenses? Washout. The, the washout is is, and we're going to talk a little bit about, about that, a little bit more about that later. But washout is for people that are that are doing liquid ball. And let's say you're hauling milk, for example, and every time you finish hauling a load of milk, you've got to do a washout of the uh, of the of the uh, of the trailer. Oh. What that does is that will track a history of your washouts. Okay. 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 It's a good okay. question. Uh, talk about now is the alert center, and I'm sure many of you are familiar with with standard alerts that have been in the system almost from day one. Alerts pop up in, in, in operations for CDL expirations and medicals and and, uh, and, and risk conflicts, just, you know, those types of alerts. We've passed over the years to be more, uh, more dynamic and, and for alerts to show up on other people's desktops. So what we added was
and Alert Center. So let's go to Operations. We'll go to Alert Center. And when you get version 6, for those of you that have it installed already, you might be saying, hey, I'm not seeing an Alert Center, Kevin. Well, it's because you need to start the Alert Center up the first time. So if you follow this, and, and this session is being recorded, so if you want to, and we'll email the recording to all of you afterwards so you, you can um, do this out. But go to Operations, click on Alert Center, and you'll notice now in the upper right-hand corner, it's got zero, no, zero new alerts and click Open. I'm going to double click there, and now I've opened <coughs> my Alert Center. A couple things that you should keep in mind with the Alert Center. One, the things are for a specific user. So settings for user Kevin. These are the alerts that are going to show up on my desktop, the ones that set up are set up. So if I was an operations manager, for example, I might want to set up some alerts. Um, and then when somebody else when somebody else did something, for instance, um, I'm set up my deadhead percent alert. Say my trigger value is deadhead percent on any load exceeds 10% of the low miles, I want to know about it. And a system to look for those type, that type of event 30 seconds, so every half minute. I could set up a minimum revenue, uh, revenue per loaded mile alert, i.e. create a business rule in your system so if anybody books a load and the minimum revenue per loaded mile is less than X, X in this case we'll say is $1.25, the system can go out and it can alert me right on my desktop, and I can say, you know, check those every every three minutes. I can driver appointment reminders, and uh, driver appointment reminders are tied to the driver's schedule. Hopefully, using the driver's schedule to schedule things like driver time off or vacation time, things like that. When we introduced the driver's schedule back in version five, version five. Seven, one of the comments that we got from people was, you know, we can set up the alerts, but I'd like to, I'd like a pop-up to come up to tell me, hey, in two days this driver's got a vacation starting. So what we did was these driver alert appointment reminders, and I went to the driver's schedule and we finished going through the alert center to show you how you can set up um, enhancement in the driver's schedule so that that this appointment reminder will work. So if I want appointment reminders, I can set those up, and I'll just say every five minutes. We introduced the idea of groups in version 6. I'm going to talk a little bit about groups a little bit later on in the presentation today. But an example of using groups in the, in the alert center would be, let's say you have multiple dispatchers, and I, you have a dispatcher that is responsible for, for, the, for, for a, a specific group of drivers. You could create a group of drivers and then click select down here, select that group associated here. So I'm not going to see driver appointment reminders Every driver in the system, I'm only going to see appointment reminders for the drivers that I'm responsible for. We all have some some expirations that, that of course, you're familiar with already, uh, CLs, but once again, um, these will be more proactive and popping up on your screen. Physicals, you can put how many days and how often the system should look for these. Tractor registration. Often do you want to, when do you want to know before that? And of course, trailer registration. And look every five minutes. <coughs> those are going to apply. I'm going to start the center when dispatch opens. I'm going to apply my alerts. So all of these alerts are active. Simply going to close the alert center. Any questions on the alert center with what we just went over? Want to keep your questions at the end? That's fine. Uh, uh, this is Harvey Gemini again. Yes. Uh, I have a quick question. Uh, is, is it possible to add another type of alert, such as annual inspection for the equipment? Uh, it's a good question. And, and what I would suggest you, you do with that is, is you can send those in to us. We are looking and collecting suggestions for, for new alerts to add to the system. Um, at this time, um, you know, it isn't in the system, but please, um, you know, and I'll certainly jot it down, um, but please, you know, send, send something like that in. There is another way that I would suggest that you can track that today if, if anybody's not doing it. I would set up an annual inspection as a maintenance item. Um, if you were just under uh, maintain equipment maintenance, um, I set up a main code. <coughs> 
for on a tractor for an annual annual inspection. I'd put I'd enter when the last annual inspection was completed. I'd schedule the next one for 12 months. I'd my preferences so I get alerted of that 30 days in advance, and then right dispatch board where you can go and look and see what's coming due, past due, etc. You will see that. So functionality for that today, but certainly adding it to the alert center would be a good idea as well. Okay. Okay. okay? All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, the driver schedule. Um, they said if, if you come to the driver's schedule and, and you're adding an event, whether it's a personal time, a vacation time, you have this reminder that's been added, and you can select, you know, when that, when the alert would go off, whether it's whether it's three days, two days, one day, twelve hours, eight hours before. Um, so that's what triggers that that alert back in the alert center. <coughs> What I do now is go through a number of preferences with you, and I know that preferences aren't the most exciting thing in the world, but to a functionality that's in version six, you're going to have to come into your preferences and, and go through some of these. So let's let's go through them. First up, we're on the company info tab, and there's a new section here that's that's selected that says type. We have motor carrier and brokerage. We have a number of customers that are using our system today that are 100% non-asset-based customers. I'm, I'm not sure if any of you are, are on the line. But if you are a 100% brokerage operation, what I, what I suggest you do, and, and we'll have some ways to go about, we'll talk about this a little bit later, how you can accomplish this, but you can come in and you, you can set up the system to be set in what we call the brokerage mode. If you set up in the brokerage mode, on the dispatch board, where things might say driver today, terminology will be changed to motor carrier. The main module would be gone. Tractor files, trailer files would be turned off, would not would not be apparent. On the dispatch board, things like tractors, trailers, drivers, the vet and maintenance I mentioned uh, with the question a few minutes ago, types, types of things would not show up on the dispatch board. In the assignments tab, have, we're currently all drivers, company drivers, owner operators, etc. And those would be gone, and you'd have carriers and brokers. Best fit functionality in the system. Everything relating to drivers has been removed from the system. What it does is it really cleans the system up and streamlines it for you if you are a 100% non asset based operation. So that was specifically put in for, for, for those types of customers. Let's go over to the shipments tab. I mean, excuse me, let's go to the system defaults tab. And let's take a look at source conflicts first. And when you received version 5, if you didn't come in here and set this up, I would suggest you all go in and do that um, as soon as we finish today. One thing you'll find that is new, however, in version 6, and the only thing in this tab that's new in version 6 is the trailer washout functionality. And I just put it to either prevent. Uh, assignment, if a washout has not been completed, warn me or ignore, and I'm just going to put it to warn. I'm okay there. Resource selection is also this this new settings here in the display settings. Data display was always there. You could always define how many days. However, now what you can also set up is how many days in the past do you want to see. We came out with the new resource assignment screen. The feedback we got was overwhelmingly positive. However, some of the comments we got was, you know, what I'd really like to see is I can see where, like from today on, you know, today being Wednesday on, but I want to see what the guy did yesterday or the day before what the truck did. So if you put it to previous days to display, that will be a default, and it will come up and you'll see, in this case, two previous days. Cubs also asked us that they wanted to see completed loads um, on assignment screen. So now show completed loads on there, and I'll turn that on. And people wanted to see what was the last commodity that I hauled in a trailer. Um, to, has that trailer been cleaned out? Does it have to be cleaned out? Is it going to be a problem with what I'm putting in there, what I'm going to haul? Um, so you can now see the last commodity that was hauled. So I'm going to leave all of those turned on, and we'll click OK here. For the scheduler, um, you can now track. IDs instead of just looking at driver ID. You can look at um, previous days in there as well. Um, you can also look at look at completed loads. So you similar functionality 
to what we just talked about um, in, in the uh, resource selection. The thing I just want to talk about, and this has to do more with uh, uh, with their buying. You know, I've bought new machines in the last few years. When you're exporting to Excel, and, and I hope I hope all of you are taking advantage of the functionality where you can export everyone on the dispatch board to Excel. You can export 99% of the reports in the program to Excel, uh, and then do whatever you want with that data out in Excel. But we also now support Excel 2007. So if you've had issues with Excel 2007 in the past, come into your file, you go into your, uh, your preferences, system defaults, print defaults, and if you're using Excel 207, select Excel 2007, and any issues you had um, should go away. Any questions on any of the preferences that we just went through? Okay, let's go ahead and save those. Now, before we actually book a new load, so we can see a number of these items in action, I'm just going to come to a booking screen. I'm going to come over. I'm going to drag the walk out, bring that over, over here. There's up a few of these. Aware and, and clearly, I'm not using the default layout in our system, um, but I'm sure you're aware that, that you can you can drag these different fields around. You save, you save the field, whatever it is, and the next time you come in, um, that screen is going to look just just the way you left it, um, and that applies to all the users in the system. So now let's go ahead and book a new load and, and take a look at some of that new functionality that we just set up. I click book new. I'm going to just type in my customer name, Albany. This pair load is going to pick up. Oops, I'm sorry about that. Didn't mean to do that. I'm particularly is going to pick up at Albany, and it's going to go to Dean Manufacturing in Chicago. Let's have it pick up now, and let's have it delivered tomorrow at five o'clock. And we'll save it. Gives us number sixty-eight thirty. Some goods. The text, we can see this wash out after automatically got checked off. Once again, why did you do that? Because we set that up in the in the reference that if latex is hauled, a washout is required. Let's say it's 42,000 pounds. It's a ways. Uh, we'll rate it. Save it. If we want to put any reference numbers in, in there, we can do that. We can put in a reference. Requires a tear and save it. Assignment. See some new fields that are now taking effect. You can see prior to display is set to two days now. I don't know if you have ever noticed in the past, but if you look at the days Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we can see certainly seven days there. That's the days to display. Days to display, and our default is set to two. It's Wednesday. The day that the day that you're actually on, um, or I should say, the day that the load is supposed to be picked up is going to be is going to have a brown header. The day that the load is scheduled to be delivered is going to have this blue header. And now we're seeing two previous days. We're seeing Monday and Tuesday, and we can see that Andrew, because we're now showing completed loads also in the purple, we can that and did load 6831 with tractor O2CT trailer 5301. That's been added in version six. Also, we're showing the equipment on this on this on this floor. We can see the origin of that load was Dean Manufacturing in Chicago, and the destination was Cole Morgan in Blue, Connecticut. We can see the actual pickup date and time, and the actual pickup date, uh, the actual delivery date and time. So I had and assign Andrews. We're going to do that the same way. So we'll we'll simply double click. Andrews, and we've, we've assigned Andrews a load. We'll come to our trailer file, and we now see there's some new information that we're seeing here as well. One thing, um, days we're seeing, um, the previous days, like we did in the, in the, on the tab with the drivers, but we're also seeing last commodity. Um, and we, we need a tanker here, so let's just, just go for, pick up a, oops, uh, well, I assigned that pretty quick, that tanker. Um, but see, tanker, uh, uh, TK4500 is now assigned to the load, and we've got an alert flashing in the upper right-hand corner. Hopefully, everybody can see that that, that red catching eye. So if I click on that, I can see that 
the alert was created because the deadhead percent on we just booked, load 6832, exceeded our rule, which we set up was 10%. In this case, it's 11.72% of loaded miles. Now, if I was an operations manager and one of my dispatchers just did that, you know, that might make me walk over and say, hey, Bill, you know, why why did you just put this, this driver on this load and we exceed our deadhead percent? And, of course, there may be a very good reason why he did that, or maybe that he needs to look for, for another driver to put on that load. Also, if we want to get rid of an alert, we can hide an alert. If we want to show hidden alerts, we can say show hidden alerts. And you can see there's a number of other alerts in there that I had hidden earlier for physicals, et cetera. If I calculate this driver pay, of course, I can just click on the pay button and calculate it. And we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll detach this load the way we normally would. And we'll, so let's just go ahead and, uh, and complete the load. Now, there is a new screen that you're seeing now on the bottom. Once again, for those of you that, that, that are doing washouts, um, you'll see a screen at the bottom that a trailer washout is required for this load. So when the load gets delivered, you can see it's scheduled. But if, if when we're completing the load, we want to complete the washout, we can mark it complete. Uh, say where it occurred, and it occurred at our delivery point is where they actually did the uh, did the walk. And say the type of washout that occurred, and we'll say hot water washout. And we'll go ahead and uh, complete it also. This load has now been has been completed. Load 6832. Any questions on on anything that I just went through there? Hey, Gemini. Yes. Uh, is there any way that we can add a trailer that we are not using, let's say, from a different carrier or a broker, without actually adding it to a data database? There, um, and tell you what, if you hold, let's let's hold that for a minute, and I'll see you when when we get to the end, okay? Okay. So please. if I forget to get back to you on that, uh, please uh, bring it up again at the end, okay? No Thank problem. you. So I'd like to show you now is let's go into accounting, let's go to print post freight bills. Once you should all be familiar with this screen here. Here's that load 6832. So whether you're doing this in the print post freight bill screen um, or you're doing it in the settlement screen, you can you can really do this from, from either place. Um, but I can see in here, I can see my assignments um, for load 68, 68 uh, excuse me. Let's pick. Uh, let's select uh, load 6082. So you can see the driver tractor trailer that was on load 6832. Um, so if I wanted to enter an expense for this trip from right here, I could I could simply click <coughs> expense. Um, I could select. Um, say I want to add a uh, add a toll. I just want to apply it um, to the tractor for this one load. Um, I collect the the load 6082. I could it and say it was um, $25 and just create it and that and that expense has now been has now been added. And if we back to that, that Let's do that one more time. Go over to the expense again. Uh, we'll select the tractor OCCT, and it was the toll that we did. Mm -hmm. We want to quit, and we'll select it. $75. We'll save it, which I didn't do before, and now we'll close it. <coughs> and if we go into that into that tractor file. Now see that that toll is there for $75. One, add those expenses from either the, uh, the billing screen, um, from the payment screen, um, or you could certainly just add them uh, just from any, just going into uh, operations uh, manager manager uh, expenses, or if you want to actually go right into the right into the tractor or the trailer, you could you could certainly add it in there as well in the pop up that I showed you.
Let's look at ports, a couple reports that are dealing with, with expenses. We'll just go to reports, and uh, I'm just going to go to all. And I'll just click on favorites. I'm going to go to expense and revenue by resource summary. Um, there's ports in the system. You can you can run expense by resource detailed, or you can run an expense and resource expense and revenue by resource summary. I'm going to select. I'm going to just going to change this to the whole year, or year to date, and I'll just go ahead and run it. It's looking at any equipment in my system that has um, expenses associated with them, um, and, and it's also pulling the revenue. You can see it's pulling the pay, any maintenance that was done. It's breaking out fuel advances. It's breaking out cap advances, and it shows us a net profit and then a, um, a gross profit or loss per mile. Um, so look at, say, tractor O2CT across here. We can see the total miles it's run for the year at about 189,000. The total revenue generated by that tractor, uh, the pay that's been sent, been pushed through the system for that tractor, any maintenance expenses that have been entered for that tractor, fuel been entered in my system. Obviously, I haven't entered a lot. And cash advances as a driver, and expenses, and these are expenses that you've set up through the expense module, the new expense module that we went over today and then your profit and your profit per mile. Um, you can also see um, uh, that it, it is giving, it is uh, totaling all these columns up for all the equipment and giving us our totals at the bottom. So our average profit per mile, if we look at our tractors and our trailers here is 99 cents. At the top, it is breaking out your revenue for all loads, your payment for all loads, your expenses for all loads, your maintenance for all loads, your miles, your fuel advances, your cash advances. It's showing us our profit for all loads without the expenses, um, and it's showing our average profit without just the expenses, and then I guess our profit with expenses and our average profit per mile with expenses. We'll look at an expense by resource report. It's a little bit easier to, to read. I'm just going to click uh, make a PF here uh, for those that, that haven't used the the, the make a PDF or when you click on it, it says get the ghost script writer. Um, this happens when you have the PDF uh, installed. Um, and it makes it, it makes it easier to view some reports, especially if it's a multi-page report in the system. Because when you scroll through a report on the screen, as you're looking at a data window, and you look at a data window um, in Builder, which our software is written in, sometimes it, it skips and it jumps. So it, by, by sending it to the PDF writer, you can easily scroll through. Uh, and you can you can and you can see this information without um, any any difficulty. So if we go back up, say the first one, once again O2CT, we can see year to date the expenses for this piece of equipment. We've got our highway tax, our tolls, our tractor insurance, our load payment, our tractor registration. Um, our total is 10,002. We can see our full advances. We can see our maintenance. And we can see the total for the selected time frame. I would encourage you as as you use the new expense functionality and and you run these reports. Please let us know what we can do to enhance the reports, change them, modify them. Because this is cut number one uh, to the expense module as well as obviously the reports. We think it can be better, um, but we're looking for some feedback uh, from your customers to, to let us know what we should do to those reports to make them better. There's one other report that it's not new to version 6, but it's one I want to show you today. Um, I spent a great time on the phone with existing customers that call me. They'll ask me various questions. We'll go in. Their system will dial in, or I'll show them something in my system. And, and there's one report that was created by, by, by one of my customers, and actually it was a customer that, that was using um, a competitive system, wasn't happy with it. Um, they, they took the time to, to send a report that they used to use in that system, but they weren't completely happy with the report. They told us what they didn't like about the report what they wanted to add to the report, what they wanted to change to the report. We added the report to the system. Actually, we added two reports. Um, one of them is called Load Revenue and Payment Line Haul, by, line haul Analysis by Customer. The other one is a Load Revenue Payment Line Haul Analysis by Driver. And I'm just going to run the one by Customer. This is a report that the owner slash general manager of this, of this company in Minnesota uh, runs every morning. Um, he comes in, he says, the first thing I do when I get in my office is I get a cup of coffee and then I run this report. He's run, he runs this report, and what he's really looking for, and he just runs it for the previous day, the last two days, 
and looking for on the report, as he comes up, he wants to see um, how many days are the loads that were dispatched for. Are they single-day loads? Are they multi-day loads? He wants to look at the empty miles on each load. And if something jumps out at him, like 912 empty miles on one load, he's going to highlight that load. He's going to go in the system. He's going to go talk to the dispatcher that dispatched that load to find out why did we book a load in the system and why why were the why are the miles empty miles 912 miles. He also knows. He also looks at the total miles. He looks at miles per day, revenue. Another key column that that he looks at is his revenue per day. He knows that his trucks need to generate X number of dollars per day for him to not stay in business but remain profitable. So he's looking for a minimum number here. He's looking for minimum average number. Since those are the payments he made to the driver and what he called the balance because this was a custom report that we created for, for him, um, the balance is the difference between the revenue and the payment. So it's, it's kind of like the gross profit or gross number, if you will. Um, so, you know, and, and other customers that I've shown this to have said, wow, this is exactly what we've been looking for. This will be great. The customer not only uses this report every day, but they also use our business intelligence product. The business intelligence product called is, is, is Pulse, which um, we've other webinars on, we've talked about in the past. But what they've been able to do is they've been able to, by using this report and Pulse, they've been able to reduce their empty miles from an excess of 13% when they started using profit to 9% today. They're about a 60-truck fleet. Their savings has been reduced from ten to $20,000 per month. It's documented why the high fluctuation. We all know that fuel prices over the last um, 18 months have certainly fluctuated a great deal. So I would encourage you to take a look at, take a look at this report um, system. I think you'll find it extremely valuable. Okay. Have a couple other things. Yes. Hi, Jim. This is Teresa with GoCo. Hi, Teresa. How are you? I'm fine. I'd like to know, um, is there a report that you guys, in this version, that does not include fuel surcharge? Very good question. Um, at this time, there is not, Teresa, a specific report um, that doesn't include fuel surcharge. What we, what we, do, what we are looking at doing for what I'll call version 6.2, though, and the reason we it's it's not as easy to do that, Teresa, is we allow you as a user to go in and create revenue item types. And I come in here, and I'll just go to my um, what I call my fuel surcharge, and I'm calling it fuel surcharge. Now, system Teresa, it might say FCHG. Or it could say anything as a, as a as a they're calling it a fuel surcharge. Um, so what what we're actually talking about doing on the development side right now. Now, is being able to set up an alias. So if you call it whatever, you're going to be able to make that equal to what we're going to call fuel surcharge. And we will be able to give you the functionality to run a report and exclude specific types of revenue. So realize how important that is to you as an owner to be able to take that fuel surcharge out, especially if, if you've got owner operators and you're passing that along to them and you need to see just, you know, what is your revenue without the fuel surcharge. So we understand isn't that fuel surcharge revenue type? Isn't that a default one that came with the property? Um, it's not. Um, it can be. It can. Well, there may. When you come in in, in the sample database, there is one. But when you go into the blank database, you can set that up with however you want. And and some will have more than one fuel surcharge because some people do. Uh, you know, have reefers obviously, and they have a separate fuel surcharge for the reefer versus the power unit. So it sounds like a very simple thing to do. Um, from a reporting standpoint, actually becomes a little bit, bit more complex. But okay. something we're aware of, and it is something we're working on. Okay. Section 2 on your expense mode on the new version 6? Yes. Can that be used? I, you used it in the freight bill screen, which we master build. Can it be used in the master bill screen as you well? Can, absolutely. Oh, cool. Okay. Yes. No problem at all. Thank you. Two very good questions. I want to talk quickly about, about two other items. That's how to I create a group and then the new email functionality that, that's in the program. And I do apologize for running a little bit long today. That's my uh, groups. Um, we're going to main groups. Groups can be used for all kinds of things. If uh, 
customers say about 60, 65% have both an asset-based operation, but they also have their brokerage authority. Um, so if you want to create a group of, say, all of your motor carriers because you want to be able to email out to a, li a list of available loads to those carriers, you could do that. that. Create a group, you click a new group. Um, I'm going to make a group, and I'm going to call it, I'm going to call this group my company drivers. And I'm not included in this group. I want all of my what we call payroll drivers. I'm going to click save. Now what I'm going to do on the left-hand side, I'm going to select which of my company drivers I want to include in this group. And I'm going to, you know what? I want them all. And I'll click Add. So they've all been added to the group on the right side. If I want to make this a private group, only for me, I can make it private. But if I want to make it available to anybody, I can just not shut off, and it's available to anybody. So close that, and I'll just go back in to show you that, boom, that, that group has now been created, all my payroll drivers. So let's say I wanted to send an email to all of my company drivers. I could simply go to Utility, Email. Box, for those of you that have used our email functionality in the past, it looks totally different than the old one. If I send it to a driver or a group of drivers, I'll just click 2, and a new address book comes up more uh, user-friendly, broken out, where you can select what you want. I'm going to select my company drivers, just double-click, and I'm going to select it, so it's being sent to all my company drivers. Um, the new message is meeting, and I'm just going to tell them that um, there will be a company meet Friday at 3 And uh, all tenants eligible to free iPod shuffle. I'll hit send. I'm calling Outlook or Outlook Express, whatever I'm using for email, and it's going to send it through, in my case, Outlook. I hit yes, and it's been sent. A read that email is is kept in your Outlook in your sent box, um, so you know that you know that it went out. And if there's a problem with any of them receiving it, of course, it would bounce back to your Outlook. What else can you do with the email instead of just sending an email like that? Let's go to the dispatch board quickly. Let's go find loads. Let's click on a load here for say Baker. We'll click and we want to email him a load sheet. So load sheet comes up. up. Like right now, all I need to do if I want to email this load sheet to Baker, I'll click email it. It turns it turn that report into a PDF. It attached it to the email. I'll click the two. I'll find driver Baker. Double click. Accept it. His email is, is his email address is there, and I'll just send it. Once in calling my email client and sending this email directly to driver Baker. I have a question. Yes. Paula with Hendrickson. Sending these emails out, and I noticed you had email addresses in there. Is that going to the phones that we have set up with Prophecy? The mobile, the mobile phones, or is that going to like their cell phones? Where would you like to go? It matters. You can because you can you can actually do it either way. If you go into drivers file, I'm sorry, this was Paula. Yeah. Sure. Uh, but you can you can set up. When you send something to a to a driver, like for this driver, Andrews, I've got an email address set up here as rtotten at mile dot com. Um, but I would, when I'm sending an email, I could put um, you're using our tracker or dispatch program. Is that correct? With the tracking to the next cell phones, could put the ten digit um, digit phone number for that driver at messaging dot nextel dot com for their email address, and that would be sent directly to the uh, uh, to the driver's mobile device. What was that you, I mean, Kevin? It's, it's the, I'll show you where you can actually just see that right in the program. We'll go to Preferences. We'll go to um, MoCom, uh, we'll Devices, and you can see right here, um, For the if you're on the Nextel network, it's the 10-digit PTN, i.e. 240, so you put 240-304-0215 at messaging at Nextel. Dot com. And the driver will get an email right on their phone. And, and 
emails, um, there is no additional charge um, for a SIN email if you're on the data plan um, with with uh, with Nextel. You minute. I know that there's. I believe there's at least one customer on the phone today that what they've done in their phones um, is set up. They do send emails to their drivers, and they have canned responses. Uh, in the phone, they're called quick notes. And then if you set up quick notes, then the driver can quickly respond to an email they receive, i.e., received load. Um, will I arrive at at, at delivery? Um, you want to you want you want to do that. Um, so that's something that if you need some more information on, we can certainly show you how to how to do that as well. Set up the quick notes in the phone. Okay. Otherwise, if we don't send it to their mobile phone. It can be sent to just like their personal cell. So once again, it's, it's, it's if when you send an email, whatever email address you've got in the email line for the driver, huh? that's that's where the that's where the system is going to look for that information. Okay. Okay. Kev, this yeah. is Smith with the Shaker Group. Can you tell us real quick if you're going to send a, an email to outside yeah. carriers, where's the email address going in the uh, carrier record? Certainly. If you go to a, there was only one spot, which was kind of a problem. Still there's, well, there's 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 the one for the main contact, but now you've got additional contacts down here um, that you can add. And, and what you're gonna like, Jason, is in not in version six, but version six one actually. Oh, okay. Version six one has has a lot of functionality for uh, brokers like yourself for not sending specific emails to specific people at a carrier or at a vendor. Um, because you may use uh, other services as a broker as well. Okay. Um, but also specify which people. There may be multiple people at that company, and maybe one person gets the confirmation, but someone else gets another document. So that functionality in version 6.1, you're going to have to wait for one more release. Um, you're going to wait for that decimal to click kick to 1 from 0. Um, then you, I think you'll see the functionality that you're asking for. So potential customer, if you look at a customer record, you could have set up an accounting to get the invoice, one set up to get the staff notes, one set up to get something. We consider the invoice for version 6.1. What we considered was like, like the BOLs, the PODs, um, confirmations, um, all of the main documents um, that you see in the billing defaults. Like the, uh, we, I don't think they considered the invoice. I can check with them on that. Okay. Um, the BOL, the load load sheet, the confirmation, the quote, you know, who should get, who who at that company should get that document. Okay. You can also send multiple documents at once in version 6.1 as, as well. So when you're doing a carrier assignment, you assign the carrier and you're on the assignment screen and you click on a uh, uh, file, you know, and you can select documents. It, it will let you send multiple documents at once instead of having to send them individually. Once again, getting, we're getting a version ahead of ourselves here. So so uh, let me, I kind of reel this in a little bit, if you don't mind. Um, so the, the email we went over, the groups we went over. Um, I believe I've actually covered everything within the system that, that I wanted to cover today. Let's quickly review um, what we did go over. Um, we went over the expense tracking that's been added. We went over driver schedules and alerts, the alert center. And including these alerts, the deadhead, the revenue, the driver appointment, the license, the physical, the registration, um, the tractor, the registration on the trailer. We talked about a uh, walkout tracking. We talked about several new preference settings, and they'll just they'll just fly in. And, um, groups. We talked about reports. With the reports, I showed you how um, you know the direct email PDF, where you click the PDF and it automatically makes it into an email. Um, there have been several questions already, but I will certainly open it up if, there, if there's any more questions. Kevin D. with B&J Trucking. Yes, Steve. Um, concerning trailer wars, I know you primarily was looking at it from an angle of a, uh, uh, like a bulk hauler or a tanker. Um, but we do a refrigerated business that requires washouts for certain things as well. Oh. Since Part of it would fit, for instance, we would need to do a washout after we haul a certain commodity. Say if we hauled fresh chickens, uh, um, then we would do a washout. 
but can we have you thought about doing that in somewhat of a, re, of a reverse for instance if our next load is going to be picked up at XYZ customer XYZ customer may require us to do a wash out of our reefer prior to getting there no matter what hauled in it before no matter what was hauled in it hmm. okay um, so can we attack that also from a some somehow flagging the customer as a war prior to type thing versus always a after a commodity type situation. Um, really write that down. I'll send it over to our development group. Um, the walkout functionality, the expense tracking, all this new functionality. Hmm. You know, we like to take the baby steps, and um, sure. if that's something that is, uh, you know, would would be uh, reasonable for them to do, and we can add, I'll certainly uh, put yeah, it in current, there. Yeah, currently we have it kind of built into that customer in little notes and stuff, but a lot of times those notes are overlooked. If it was, you know, dispatcher are going to assign a resource to this customer's load, it'd be nice if a pop-up pops up, hey, you know, this customer requires warship to make sure the warship happens prior to being there or something, or just Absolutely. some kind of flag. Sure. And so your company name again was? B&J. B&J. Right. Okay, great. Thank you. Any questions or, or suggestions? And I, and I would encourage you, if you have any other, other either questions or suggestions, you can certainly call with the questions. But if any other suggestions, my email address will come up here at the end, but don't hesitate to uh, send any uh, any emails over to me. I, I want to introduce you to uh, Miriam Vella. I'm sure many of you know Miriam as the director of our training department. Miriam's just going to talk a little bit about uh, more about how you can maximize what you're getting out of your prophecy software today. Mary Hey, by the way, great presentation. So much information that you just gave um, that's benefit uh, the people in this webinar. I can imagine when we uh, updates, there are things we add in there that customers that have been using the software for a while don't realize that it's kind of hard for us to try to reach back and contact every new customer and or existing customer and say, wait a minute, did you know that this is a feature that might come up? During our implementation with you, we did add in. Um, we do offer um, in training for customers to come up here to Prophecy, uh, about your site, to work with your people, uh, to make sure that you're utilizing the software uh, the best way you can, and maximize the. This is with you guys, um, and also we do have you know telephone training that if you have other staff members in the in the uh, office that weren't able to attend the webinar might talk to an instructor. Uh, feel free to give us a call, and we can talk over your, your to how we can get this information out to your your other employees. Uh, anybody have any questions about the different services that we provide in the uh, implementation side? Have a training session, please. Depend on what your training needs are going to be. I mean, we do offer, like, the in-house training. Um, and we also offer like telephone training. Uh, today, actually, we're offering a percent discount for anybody that joined in on the webinar because we realize that you've taken some time to invest in all the new features that we have. Uh, if you want, you, what you could do is just email me. Um, we discuss what your training needs are, and we can take it from there. A question: I, I noticed something in Kevin's presentation, and I don't think that the our particular um, business, either we don't have the function on there or I don't know where it is, but it's the emailing to all the drivers. That would be really, really helpful on okay. our end. Is that something we have or I don't know? Is it okay? Yeah. Um, we can yep. check the version that you presently have. And, yeah. and if you don't, if you haven't been shipped version 6 yet, we can get out to you. We and and just to... I, do okay. we, I, can, I can get that shipped out to you. And just to your question, as Miriam said, there there is a 10% discount right now on a four-hour block of training. So one thing you want to consider doing is a four-hour block of training would be normally $599. Uh -huh. So in the discount now, saving the $60, and then Miriam or somebody on her team customize those those four hours so that you can maximize your return um, on the four hours that you spend with her and, and certainly get more out of version 6 and get more out of the software in general. Okay, so I mean, we have to 
do we the email thing that comes with version six? Yes. Oh, okay. It's actually in the program. It's in the program we have today. It's just not as user friendly today as, as it is in version six. Oh, okay. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. Other questions for myself or Miriam? Hey, Kevin, Milan and Gemini again. Yes. Uh, still wait for that response for the outside source trailer without putting... Uh, I'm sorry. Well, thank you for reminding no me. When you when you book a load in the system, when you go to do an assignment... Um, let me just take... Uh, so we have one here. I know this. It's right here that says add a third party trailer. Okay. If you add a third party trailer, um, add the trailer to the load. Uh, you can type in a description for the trailer. And now you've got a trailer on the load, but it, it does not add that trailer to your to your system. Actually, I cannot add a uh, number of the trailer. I cannot put ID. Sure. What you can do, you can't put ID, but in the description you could put. You could put the trailer number. Will it show? Will it show on a dispatch board screen the number that I put in the description? I do not believe that that shows up there, uh, but that's something that we could check on for you. Mm. Okay, one more thing. Um, we're doing a lot of business with uh, frequent loads. Uh, is there any way that uh, actually in version six it can be connected? with history surcharge on a fuel. So for example, if I change it in a his, uh, history surcharge for previous week, previous month, get connected? Um, the question is a little bit more in depth. I mean, we'd have to look at how you set up your frequent loads. If you're ring your, are you, are, when, you're, when you save your frequent loads, are you ringing them already? Yes. Okay, yes. what well, I suggest you do is not rate your frequent loads. Leave blank, and then as you bring up your frequent loads, rate in, and then the system will automatically pick up the correct fuel surcharge that's in effect for the time you're shipping. Uh, we can't, we can't. What we can't do is is automatically go back and just change uh, or update charge based on a fuel surcharge that, that's been updated. Mm -hmm. Does this mean that, let's say, for example, for one customer, I have let's say for a week 127 loads? Mm -hmm. Every single one of them, I have to go and for each and one. No, I I, you, you can rate them all at the same time. If, if you rate them all in, in, in one screen, um, you can select them and rate them. And um, what I suggest is, you know, you might want to get together with Miriam and someone from her group and spend a couple hours going over that how your how your workflow should be. And I'm sure you'll end up saving a tremendous amount of time. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Yeah, even I can go ahead and just uh, uh, a little later and see about setting something up. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, we'll do that. Okay. Any questions for anybody else? Once again, I, I, I do apologize. We went a little long today, and uh, we didn't, normally don't go this long on a webinar, but I hope you've all found it beneficial. We'd like to certainly thank you all for your participation today. Thank you for your, your business in the past, and, and look forward to working with you as we move forward. Everybody have a great day.